What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Clemens, here with me as always are my two co-hosts and the two homies, Michael Plant and Mike Bonney. What's going on, dude? Yikes. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> yeah, not bad. You, know, you almost forgot his name, but not bad. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, it's some prime rib. Prime rib? Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Nice. Yeah. What did you do with the plant? Anything? Oh, I just went over to the ants. How about you? Went over to the in-laws, had some fire turkey. A pretty, uh, pretty enjoyable day. Watched some uh, crappy football, but... Hey, Washington actually looked pretty good. Mm, yeah. Or they just looked the best out of all the bad teams we watched. Well, it's, fair. it's fair. I don't know. Houston played pretty good. I was going to say, Texas looked pretty good, too. But I jumped in the Thursday night recap, guys, because there's no bye weeks this week. Woo! For some reason, there's uh, two buys next week, Carolina and Tampa Bay, but no buys this week. Yeah, uh, the first game, uh, unless everyone always plays Thanksgiving week, I don't know. I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. We just apparently never noticed before. But uh, the first game from Thursday... Houston, Texas beat the Detroit Lions 41-25. Guys, Deshaun Watson was on fire, 17-25 for 318 yards and four touchdowns. Hasn't thrown a pick in, like, his last five or six games. Yeah, he is straight fire right now. Hit Will Fuller on two bombs. Yep. Um, and Fuller was six receptions on seven targets for 171 yards and two touchdowns. He just had a wide They didn't want to cover him for some reason. Yeah, Fuller won me quite a bit of money in FanDuel. I had him and uh, Deshaun Watson won me fifty nice. sixty bucks. Yeah, nice. But uh, Duke Johnson, he uh, also caught a pretty sweet touchdown from uh, Deshaun Watson too, and he also had nine carries for thirty-seven yards on the ground. Uh, Brandon Cooks kind of a quiet day, five catches for eighty-five yards. Oh, not quiet. It's pretty decent. Um. Then on the Lions side of the ball, guys, it was a pretty, pretty weird start to the game. Didn't the Lions fumble or turn the ball over on three or four straight possessions? They turned the ball over at least on two straight plays. Two straight like, snaps is a turnover. Yeah, J.J. Watt jumped up and picked Stafford right on like... Then it was a fumble that very next play. And then it was a fumble on the next next drive, right? Yep. Yeah, that, that was crazy. But they looked like crap. I'm surprised uh, Matt Patricia is still their coach. Uh, but Adrian Peterson had 15 carries for 55 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, I carry on Johnson, 11 carries, 46 yards. And then uh, four receptions for 52 yards receiving. He was the receiving back because of the DeAndre Swift still battling concussion. Um, so what's your guys' biggest takeaway from this game? Anything? Matthew Stafford does not look good without Kenny Galladay. No, he looks very pedestrian. Hawkins is probably a top three tight end. Yeah, he stayed good. He had five receptions on eight targets for 89 yards. He was uh, very solid. He's probably a really good blocker, too, man. He's always getting 10 points, at least. He doesn't, like, bust in, like, the 20s, the 30s, like Travis Kelsey, obviously, but if you need 10 points from tight end, that's your guy, I feel like. Definitely. A little point, anything to add? Uh, no, just that uh, Matthew Stafford, I mean, what's, Kenny Galladay's been out, what, three straight games now? I want to say, yeah. in the three straight games, Matthew Stafford only has four oh, touchdowns, man. one interception. He doesn't even have a 300-yard passing game. Like, he's struggling without Kenny Galladay. I think he he has the same rule applied to him with Matt Ryan and Julio. He's been Jones. having a bad year all year, to be honest. I mean, yeah, injuries. No. Have... <clears throat> he's bad. That's it's true. I'm injury right now. Too. Yeah. yeah. COVID and whatnot. Yeah. <clears throat> Jumping over to the next game. Uh, Washington football team, 41, Dallas Cowboys, 16. Washington just kind of dominated from the get-go. Like you said, like, they looked real good. Alex Smith didn't really have to do anything, 19-26 for only 149. Antonio Gibson, man. Holy Plus, shit. Yeah, Antonio Gibson coming out party on national TV, guys. <clears throat> 20 carries, 115 yards, and three touchdowns. Three Honestly, touchdowns. I think he makes J.D. McKissick pretty much – 
not existing because Antonio Gibson could do everything J.D. McKissick could do, but just run better. Yep. Yeah, he he could catch the ball very well. He was a wide receiver in college, so... Yeah, but they just don't want to kill him. They don't. Yeah, this, exactly. This was so an outlier. McKissick will be there for a little bit. I th- it, was a, it was one of those cases where this was a positive game script for them where they didn't really need to use McKissick because McKissick is the pass catching back and they weren't sure, down. Yeah. But, man, if they, they should use Gibson as the pass catcher, too. He would be, they did this he, game. He would be an instant top pick next year. Not, I wouldn't say the number one pick, but he'd be no, up there. No, he'd be a round two pick probably. For sure. Hey, he's trying to put some respect behind the Washington football team's name. Which might be their, might be their name going forward. I don't know if you guys Love it. I don't care. I love it. <laughs> sure. I'm, I can't yeah, wait for play, that mascot. Little play, your boy. One of those good matchups. It's just going to be a football. Seven receptions. <laughs> on nine targets for 92 yards. And then Logan Thomas, quiet day, only caught one pass for 28 yards. No, no, what? he threw that no. pass. He threw that pass for 28 yards. And he had four he, receptions. He a touchdown. No, he did yeah. yeah, and then he caught a touchdown with four receptions for 20 yards. You know how to wow, read? Yeah. No, I don't. What's a read? <laughs> What's a read? <laughs> but, uh, That's what Mitch is wondering. Cowboys. Andy Dalton, 25-35 for 215 a touchdown and a pick. Yeah, yeah kind of just a blah day. And uh, speaking of blah days, Zeke, 10 carries for 32 yards. One reception, uh, one reception <laughs> three targets for seven. Yeah, yeah, weird, he fumbled too. <laughs> Fifth fumble loss. That's uh, That ties his uh, career. He's only got five career fumbles lost, and this year he's got five total. Do you think he gets traded in the offseason? Nah. Why? Jerry Jones nah, loves At it. At least try one more year with Dak back, I guess. Yeah. Just yeah. run it back. Yeah. And all the wide receivers did, I mean, did okay. Uh, Cooper, six of eight, <laughs> eight targets for 112 yards at a touchdown. Michael Gallup, six of eight <laughs> targets, 41 yards. CDM, five for 21. Nah, nah. Just targets galore over there in that offense. Yeah, um, not great targets, though. <laughs> icky, icky, icky targets. Except for Cooper. Garbage time targets. Yeah, Cooper's yep. Cooper's was a decent run and catch after that with that throw by Andy Dalton. That was lightning in a bottle. You're only going to get that once every <laughs> two or three games, I feel like. Yep. Uh, but jumping into the game previews now, guys. 64 Las Vegas Raiders at the 3 and 7 Atlanta Falcons. Derek Carr, guys. Killer matchup this week. How you guys, uh, where do you guys see him ending up this week? Can't talk tonight. <laughs> tonight? What do you where mean do you tonight? See him? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a good matchup. It makes him streamer worthy when you're playing the Falcons. They give up the most points to uh, second most points to quarterbacks behind the Seahawks. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> Low end quarterback. Although I mean, don't, it wouldn't surprise me if they get up big here and then it's a Josh Jacobs game just to kind of put out the you know milk out the time. I don't know about that. Probably Devontae Booker. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> no. it wouldn't. Su- it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I mean, last week was different. Devontae only got five carries compared to Josh Jacobs' seventeen. But the week before that, Josh got twenty-one and Devontae got sixteen. He was creeping up there. Do you think Carr's a low end uh, quarterback one this week or no? Low end, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes it tough though. With all nobody's on bye. That's yeah, the, that's no, going to be the problem. So it yeah. makes him low end QB one, high end QB two because of his matchup. Who would you who would you start out of this game? Him or Matt Ryan? Matt Ryan. I mean, is Julio playing? Matt Ryan. So, <laughs> Julio played last week and. Uh, I know, but he got injured. Matt Ryan looked garbage. What do you think, Ike? He's uh, so uh, Matt Ryan. I would, ah, man, Matt Ryan just because of his weapons, I guess. Yeah, it, it depends on Julio. He's questionable with a hamstring for this week. Uh, he was limited in practice. but Even with that, I guess I just trust Calvin Ridley and all them more than Nelson Aguilar and Darren Waller. I mean, Darren Waller's going to be great, obviously, but still. Yeah, the hard, yeah. the hard part for the Raiders is I think Nelson Aguilar or Henry Ruggs, or someone's going to make a big play. It's just a matter of who. 
for sure. And uh, go, moving out of the backfield, Josh Jacobs coming off a pedestrian game, 17 carries for 55 yards. But he, he did find the end zone, but like you guys already brought him up, Devontae Booker stealing a little bit of his touches away. Yeah, uh, I mean, last week it was a little better. He only got five, like I said. So that's you like to see that. But it seems like when Jacobs is uh, banged up, they like to use Devontae Booker to ease the workload a little bit. Mm-hmm. He's stolen three touchdowns from him on the year so far. Um, I, I, besides Darrell Waller and this, these pass catchers, which three do you trust the most? Probably Nelson Aguilar or what? Yeah, I would probably take Nelson Aguilar or any of them. He's been actually decent the past few weeks. Are you guys comfortable with putting him in your lineup yet, or no? Or did the he had a one point a couple weeks ago against Denver? Uh, this is the if you want to start him any week, this is your week. Yeah, this is the week. He's coming off of a nine target week last week. He this is his team. most trustworthy week, which means it's very likely he'll bust, but still. Yeah. Or what well, I mean, the play I brought it up is. This offense will probably hit a big play at some point, and Aguilar is the big play threat in the offense. So maybe he will cut. He will catch a long touchdown or something. Yeah, or he's, he's got the best opportunity to <laughs> catch it. But uh, Darren Waller, obviously top three tight end every week. Yep, uh, leads the over, team of targets. No, no chance. Jumping over to Atlanta, we talked about Matt Ryan a little bit. Kind of in the same boat as Derek Carr. Uh, the other guy, Mike and I can agree that they like it better than Carr, probably. What are you guys thinking? Top eight quarterback ish? Yeah, I mean, he, I would maybe a lower end QB1. I would maybe legit 10. put him right around Derek Carr, maybe like, 10, like 11. Said, slightly above. Fair enough. They, um, they can interchange. Now, what I really want to talk to you guys about in this offense is Todd Gurley, guys, being out. How high are you putting Brian Hill this week? I actually, I actually think he'll be okay. okay. Yeah. I mean, running they, back, too, right? Yeah, I'd say running back, too. Yeah, low end. Uh, I mean, sorry. if they're going to use him like they use, they're use, they using Todd Gurley, when they get into the red zone, they're probably going to hand the ball off to him. They're definitely going to use Edo Smith, though, too, so... Yeah, the thing that worries me is Brian Hill's probably not as crafty around Gurley, or crafty around the red zone like Gurley is. Right. Finding those scenes, being able to get in the end zone, so that he might not get the touchdowns that Gurley's got. But no, you're you're he, not wrong. He's still he's still gonna get the volume, like you said. He's he's going to. Because Todd Gurley's second in the league in red zone rushing attempts with 42. I mean, mm-hmm. he's only behind. It's Derek. insane. It's gotta it's gotta go to someone if they get into the red zone. And Definitely. I just, I, I think Edo Smith's more of the passing catchback, so he's probably going to assume the Brian Hill role, and Brian Hill will slide into the Todd Gurley role. Mm-hmm. Um, Calvin Ridley, guys, he's playing. You plug him into your lineup. He's, yeah. You're hoping for wide receiver. Yeah, he's a starter. Holly Jones will play. You said he's banged up, questionable with that hamstring, hamstring, right? Yeah, they said game time decision. <laughs> Oh man, that's risky. Obviously, yeah. you're starting him if he's healthy, but that's still definitely be scared. He played like I felt like he played 15 minutes of that last game, and that was it. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was real weird. But if, if he's sidelined, you guys like Russell Gage? You, I can't. That I can't think of another. All of me is Zacchaeus. Yes, either of those guys on your radar, maybe for DFS, Gage more than Zacchaeus. Yeah, it's it, for some reason it seems like the Falcons have roles for each one of their backup receivers, like they have with Julio and Ridley. Like when Ridley was out, Zacchaeus kind of went out, and then when Julio's been out, it's been Gage that's been really seeing the benefit of it. It's weird. Fair enough. And then uh, Hayden Hurst really let his owners down last week. Guys hit yep. two targets and didn't do shit with him. What do we do with him moving out? Can you trust him still? What do you think? He's not very trustworthy, but I think he'll he'll bounce back this week slightly. Like I mean, all he needs is get you his ten points, and he's been good at doing that this year. Yeah, I mean, but there's that weird trend that if Julio's out, pretty much Hayden Hurst becomes irrelevant, not existing, <laughs> which is so odd. But hey, yeah, we'll see this week for sure if he's actually out. 
Uh, uh, jump in the next game, and then the three and seven Los Angeles Chargers versus seven and three Buffalo Bills. This game's definitely going out one of the screens. I'm excited to watch this one. Uh, Justin, Justin Herbert, guys, he's been phenomenal since week three. He's had over 20 fantasy points every single week, and he's a must start every week, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, at this point, his last four games, he's had 10 touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, out of those four games, two of them have been 300-plus yards. I mean, I I would temper your – I mean, the Bills' defense hasn't been playing great this year, but this is probably going to no, be the toughest yeah, – this might be the toughest challenge he's going to face just because the secondary is pretty good, and he has been known to hone in on Keenan Allen and then with Tredavious White shadowing him this week. That could I backfire. I don't know if he's shadowing him, though. He does not. Tredavious White doesn't go into the slot a lot. Keenan does go into the slot. So Keenan lives in the slot. Yeah, so it, I guess we'll have to just wait and see, but that's what I heard, that Tredavious doesn't travel in the slot a whole lot. So I wonder if he'll just be glued on Mike Williams, you know. I, I mean, you know, that, that's it could not be. a terrible matchup on Mike Williams, for Mike Williams, though, either, just because he's so much taller than Tredavious White. Yeah, but no. no. Tre'Davious even gave uh, what was it, DeAndre Hopkins, some fits that it, on that what besides that one hail mary throw. I mean, he definitely know, didn't like, give DK fits, that's for sure. <laughs> he did in the beginning, but then in the rest of the game, he definitely took him took him over. But yeah, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Just temper expectations. That's it. For, for sure. sure. And then you per- and then uh, Keenan Allen, yeah, wide receiver one. Starting, starting obviously. Borderline wide receiver two, yeah, starting him. But what do you guys think about the backfield? Austin Eckler, Anthony Lynn said that he has a chance to be activated from his reserve and might be active. I, I would not be yeah, playing no. him if he's active. I don't think he will be he's active. He's going to be on a very limited snap count, I feel like. Yeah. If, he's act- if he's active, how bad does that hurt uh, the Balazs Mirage? You can't start him with confidence, that's for sure. Yeah, I don't think... Because well, Wyatt Beckler is healthy and he takes all the carries. I don't believe... I mean, the Chargers aren't playing for a playoff spot here. I mean, they're going to be playing... I don't really know why they're bringing him back right That's now. what I'm saying. They're probably not going to activate him. Like, they, they're they not going to play him this game if they're smart. Like, I know he's feeling great, but they're not going to play him because they're playing for the future. So I don't see him playing, yeah. in my but opinion. Anthony, Anthony Lynn's coaching for his job, guys. He might want to show what the offense can do with a healthy Eckler with Herbert there now. You well, know he, what I'm he, he won a game last week without him. So he puts him in, and then Eckler gets hurt, and then he basically just <laughs> sealed his fate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel you. I feel you. Um, Hunter Henry, guys, he had a decent week last week. Uh, you think it, he's obviously a start with him? Yeah, you're obviously a start with him. Is, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's got back-to-back weeks with a touchdown. So. He's heating yeah. up. A little bit. Uh, jumping over to the other side, Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, coming off the bye week. How do you Obvious like him start. in this matchup? I think he'll be fine. Quarterback one as usual. Yeah, he's got such a high floor with his rushing value. He's just steel. Chargers are always in a, are always in a shootout, so this works for him. Again, I, mean, Not- I wouldn't be surprised if he throws a pick. I mean, they got a decent secondary too, but he's still oh, gonna—he's no, still gonna have a 300-yard passing game. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Which running back of this offense you guys take? It's Singletary this week or Moss? <laughs> and are you starting either with confidence? Starting neither with confidence, but pro- I'm I probably going, going to Zach Moss guy, now. <laughs> I guess. Or Ooh, you were yeah, a I, I, you were a Singletary guy. They just aren't using him anymore. It's. <sighs> Zach Moss is better, man. Well, in Apparently, the beginning, in the not beginning, really, I guess. In the beginning, Zach Moss <laughs> was injured. And that's why they were leaning on Devin Singletary for majority of the time. But in the past two weeks, Zach Moss has received uh, the most carries from this backfield. He's got nine in week uh, nine and seven in week ten. They didn't play week eleven. Uh, they don't run it enough to you to even start one of them, and if they do in the red zone, it's either Josh Allen or Zach Moss. So basically, they're both. Yeah, that's what that's what I was. It, it, he Josh Allen steals touchdowns away from these guys. That's why they're yeah, big time. They're just not, carries in general. They're not high ceiling guys. I mean, I guess they're more. Uh, I mean, not they're not really high floor guys either. I mean, 
No, no they're, they're just there. there. Yeah, I mean, if you have to start one, though, it would be Zach Moss. He's just getting the red zone work. So if they, if, you With know, no bye weeks, you guys should not have to start one of them. It, maybe Stefan Diggs gets tackled on the one yard line. I think Zach Moss gets a cheap, easy touchdown, but that's the only way I see him getting a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, of Boston I gave you a nice transition to Stefan Diggs, Dylan. Why don't you hop on that? Don't worry about it. But <laughs> Stefan Diggs obviously starting him. Yep. Wide receiver one. Uh, but with, I want to talk to you with John Brown being out with a nasty leg injury. Um, does Cole, how much more relevant is Cole Beasley now? Can you guys trust him again? I'd start him in the flex. In the flex, in the flex, flex for sure. Flex or wide receiver three. If you're if you're depraved of injuries. I mean, this is one of those weeks where there's no bye week, so you might have another option. <coughs> yeah, true. When Brown was out, I mean, Beasley came in. He had 22 fantasy points last, before the bye week. Yeah, it's it. I believe... The last two games, John Brown was out, and that was this game in Week 7. Cole Beasley's had 12 targets and 13 targets in those games. I mean, when John Brown is out, he seems to be targeted as the underneath guy. That's nice. Yeah, it's just, if I'm not mistaken, right, the, the Bills' whole offense had to struggle a little bit the last time John Brown was out for that stretch of games, right? Yeah, a little bit. The offensive in a hole. But Cole Beasley was the one bright spot out of it, besides Stephon mm-hmm. Diggs, obviously. Yeah, hopefully Josh Allen stays good. Um, but I jumped over the next game because we can just skip over those tight ends. You don't know who's catch a touchdown from week to week. But 3-7 New York Giants versus 2 seven and one Cincinnati Bengals. Guys, this game's disgusting. I'm surprised this game wasn't on Thanksgiving also. <laughs> Daniel Jones, killer matchup. Can you trust him yet? Nope. Yeah. No, he's not trustworthy, but he's got a good matchup. Not trustworthy. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> if you're hurting for a streamer, I guess, even though there's no bye weeks, he could be a streamer this year. I don't have Derek Carr. I was just going to say, who would you rather yeah. have, him or Derek Carr? Derek Carr. Yep. But uh, how about Wayne Gallman? I mean, he said four straight games with a touchdown now, I think it was. Or is it two straight games? Uh, it was one of the two. Uh, if you have Gallman on your roster, you're starting him as you're running back, too, and you're not even really thinking twice about it. It's a great matchup against the Bengals this week, too. Ike, what do you mm-hmm. think? Yeah, you're starting him, obviously. Yes, yeah, sir. With Devontae Freeman out, he's definitely been reaping the benefits. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, which uh, pass catcher of this offense you trust the most? Sterling Shepard? Yep. Gary Slayton? Sterling. Wide receiver three flex area. Yeah, he's, yep, I feel you there. Pretty boomer bust. I like his upside, especially in this matchup. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, it's either him or Slayton. I mean, they're both. I kind of like Slayton this week a little bit, too. I feel like he can catch a deep pass. Yeah, yeah, this secondary for the Bengals is obviously not good. I mean, I know Shepard's been out, but believe it or not, Slayton's got... Seven uh, percent higher team target percentage. I mean, mm-hmm. even Slayton's involved in this. It's it seems to be either Sterling Shepard though or Darius Slayton. It's, it's kind of upsetting for Evan Ingram owners. Mm. Yeah, but uh, obviously you're still starting Ingram because the way the position is. Yeah, I mean this defense is bad. He could bust <laughs> bust a forty one uh forty yard run honestly off. And then, guys, guys, what do we... we, I mean, mean, obviously, Joe Joe Burrow Burrow with the injury last last week, devastating. devastating. What What do you think think about this offense as a whole? whole? Can you start start anybody anybody now with Brayden Brayden Allen Allen at quarterback? quarterback? I'm disappointed. Only one. Uh, Uh, Tyler Boyd Boyd probably moves to a high wide receiver three three now. Probably maybe just a wide receiver three. Gio Bernard is probably a risky flex, and I wouldn't even be starting T. Higgins anymore, I think. I mean, Gio was questionable this week, too, so monitor that. So if you don't play, Samaj... They, they said, said he was, was going to be playing. playing. They said he was going to be playing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. If, I got an update on my sleeper app. If, a little, like, like an, an hour or two. Or I was, was going to say, if they pull some Teddy Bridgewater move and say that, you know, he's not going to play at the last second, Samaj P. Ryan's the next guy in line. Right. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm concerned about this offense with Joe Burrow going down. 
can't, can't just, you, you, they, they were throwing, throwing so much, much with Joe Burrow, Burrow. There's, there's no, no chance they're going to be doing, doing that with, with, with whoever's going to be quarterbacking, quarterbacking now. I mean, so, right now, man. I mean, I, I think, think they're still going to be chucking it because they're going to be losing the whole time. I just think they're going to be shit targets, so it's not going to Yeah, their offensive line isn't good enough to control the game with the run game, especially with Joe Mixon now going to IR. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be, be rough, rough for them. them. At, At least, least for this, this week, week, I would not be yeah, starting most of them. Definitely just to wait and see. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe we're, we're wrong. wrong. Maybe we're wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Yeah. I'm getting yeah, a Blake too, Bortles vibe. Right. I'm getting a Blake Bortles vibe. Like, it's just going to be bad. It's just going to be all but garbage but points. <laughs> jump it over to a much better game, guys. 7-3 Tennessee Titans versus 7-3 Indianapolis Colts. Right for the division, whoever wins this one. Ryan, Ryan Tannehill, I kind of advise owners to sit him away this week. Yeah, yeah, last, last time, time he played in, he only had 10, 10 fantasy points and got beat, beat up pretty bad. The planet in the head. I want to say the last time they played Indy, wasn't that the one where he only had 10 completions? Tannehill. So, yeah, you're, you're sitting him against Indy. No, no, that, that was, was the Bears. Bears. That was the Bears was, one? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he was 50 to 27 for 147. Oh, no, he only threw for 147. He still had 15 completed passes. No, there was a game where he had uh, only 10 completions. Yeah, yeah that, that was the Bears. Bears. Yeah. Yep. yep. The game the that I just read was from, was from the Colts game, game, the last, last game. Oh, uh, okay. That's why I was confused. Yeah, you're uh, This week, at least. And then, and then Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines, Jordan Wilkins, it was uh, the Naeem Hines show the last time these teams, teams played. Do you expect something, something similar? Or the play? Or, or, sorry, sorry. I, you were, you've been, been higher on Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor, Taylor lately. lately. How, do How do you feel about, about this matchup? This, this one, one is probably not, not going, going to be in his, his favor, favor because, because I think... Uh, <sighs> I just, I just don't, don't. I think, I think the Titans, Titans are going to key in on him. They got some guys that can stop him up front. front. They need. I feel, I feel like, like Naheem Hines, Hines is the guy this week. week. It always, always seems to be like every other week. week Naheem Hines, Hines does something, something good. good. You, you agree, agree with him? With him? Uh, LeBlanc or no? Yeah, it's upsetting. I have to agree with Hike right here, though. Uh, <laughs> I mean, last week he did get 22 rushing attempts. I mean, that was because they played the Packers and the Packers. That was like, like his first, first time since like week, week two or something. Yeah, week two. It? Week two was the last yeah. time he got 20. That was the only other time he got 20 plus rushing attempts. And uh, week 10 when they played the Colts, I mean, he only had seven rushing attempts. Naeem Hines led the team that week with 12. Duh. Duh. I must, I must ask, ask did, did you, you skip, skip over Derek, Derek Henry, Henry, AJ Brown, Corey Davis, Davis, and Humphreys, Humphreys and, and John, John Smith, Smith and Phil Rivers, too? What do you mean? We, we went from Ryan Tannehill, Tannehill to Jonathan Taylor. Taylor. You're, You're absolutely, absolutely right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's hop back, back to Derek, Derek Henry, Henry though. He's, He's obviously, obviously running, running back, back one, but temper expectations, expectations this week? week? Yeah, I, I mean, to be fair, the only ones we really need to talk about are Corey Davis and John O. Smith. Because you're starting A.J. Brown and Derrick Henry against this defense. Yeah. Yeah, A.J. Yeah, yeah, Brown, Brown had a sick play last week. week. He, he, was, was, he, he had, had a pretty, pretty pedestrian good day, day up until, until he caught that, that and then ran, ran for a lot of ways. He's, he's just, just so explosive, explosive with the ball, ball in his hands. But uh, uh, you, where are you, you starting? Start, you're, you're comfortable, comfortable starting, starting Corey Davis? Davis? I'm not comfortable starting it, but I've, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, Corey Davis is obviously the second receiving option on this Mm-hmm. I mean, he he tied last week with AJ Brown with seven targets. I mean, he's he keeps, he keeps getting, getting the about targets, targets to be started. Started. Yeah, he's got volume. Surprisingly, it's just a matter. Of, it's one of those game scripts. Like if you see the mm-hmm. Tennessee ti- Titans down, they're going to be using Corey Davis a lot. But if they're not down, Aaron Rodgers struggles against the Colts. Colts. I mean, I feel like Tannehill will too, which, which means, means it's going to be, be bad, bad for. That, to be fair, yeah, Corey, Corey, AJ Brown, Brown, don't know what won. Aaron struggled in the second half for some reason. The first half, they scored 28 points. Yeah, yeah, I, don't I don't understand that. that. Aaron, I don't see Ryan 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 no, you're yeah, right. Like, hey, hey, here's, here's 28, 28 points. points. If, yeah. if, if this offense is going to do well, it's going to depend on Derrick Henry running yeah. well yep. because this offense Which is going to depend be on the play action. It's going to be, be a tough, tough game for Titans, man. Yeah. I wouldn't be... I wouldn't, be surprised. Well at all. I wouldn't be surprised no. if Corey Davis has a five reception for 40-yard game. Right. right. Probably, Probably touched touched down in there. there. He, did he did lead the team the last, the last time, time these guys, guys played in, in receiving, so maybe, maybe they like his, his matchup, matchup a little better, better than A.J. Brown's. Could be. Could be. 
Yeah, but, but, uh, I mean, the last time these guys played, they used John o. Smith a lot, too. He had, he he tied the team in targets with Corey yeah, Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six, six targets. Six, six targets. Six, six targets. Anyone in that game, game right? right? For a, For a touchdown. touchdown. Yeah. And Josh so Josh 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 <laughs> 11 weeks that's not yeah, a lot yeah, but he's got rough. he's got six touchdowns though yeah yeah that's a, so he, he's good because if they get in the red zone there's always that chance they do that play action boot shit and they you know just give a little flip off to johnny smith yep yep agreed, agreed. i think we can and jump that, back to the colts now you guys cool with starting phil rivers as a streamer this week he had 16 fantasy points the last two times or the last time these two matched up I'm never comfortable starting Philip Rivers. No, I don't no, know. yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, glad, I'm glad you guys said no. <laughs> with with no bye weeks, you guys can move. Yeah, up with no bye weeks, if, if you don't have another option, then you are you are in some deep shit. With, with, with no, no bye weeks, weeks uh, Michael, Michael Pittman, Pittman Jr. Jr. kind of busted out of the scene a little, little bit the last, last few weeks. weeks. Would, Would you guys be interested in plugging into, into your flex this week? Why does he be free at all? Or no, not yet. Not, I mean, with the no bye weeks, like you said, probably not. Yeah. yeah. The, last the last time he blew up, the last time these two played, he caught, he caught seven, seven eight balls, balls for 101 yards. yards. Just, Just something, something to uh, keep, keep an eye on, maybe yeah, throw in he a did have, DFS lineups, lineups or something. He did have eight targets in there. Uh, in that last game with them, he led the team in that uh, in that game. I, it kind of depends. I mean, if you. They've been using him when the Colts have been down. It's the same situation a little bit with the Titans receivers because the Colts, they want to run the ball. Mm-hmm. And if they're down, they can't run the ball, and then they're going to be throwing it to Michael Pittman, probably get doing some gadget plays with him, you know, throwing some dump-offs to Naheem Hines, and that's how they get their points. Yeah. yeah. But if they're going to be leading this game, I don't know if P- Michael Pittman's going to be that involved, and he's going to he's going to get a lower volume. He might be able to make something of that volume like an A.J. Brown. Where he can bust off a long one. Sure. But I see him having low volume in this game. And then, and then you, don't you don't really want to start any other wide receivers. receivers. And, then and then unfortunately, they used all three tight ends so much that you don't, don't really, really want to start any of them, guys, right? right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you had to, Burton, I guess. Just because yeah. Frank Reich loves him. Find, and jump into the next, go ahead. Find you a person that looks at. Uh, J- uh, <laughs> Trey Burton the way Frank Reich does, and you'll you'll be set for life. Four and seven, seven Carolina, Carolina Panthers, Panthers versus the four and six, six Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings. Vikings. Sounds, Sounds like, like Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater guys. Sounds, Sounds like he is going to play. But uh, with God him being banged up, I'm not good shit. shit. <laughs> and, and with, with him being banged up, I'm not comfortable really starting him either. You should be used to that. Some people have to, sir. You should be used to that by now, though. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe DJ Moore's back, back in a big way. way. Oh, about DJ? Yeah, about DJ. I mean, with PJ Walker at quarterback last week, he he tied the most targets he ever had this year with 11. Nope, I lied. Mm-hmm. It was the second most. He had 13 in week two. But still, then, that's a lot. There was talk Christian McCaffrey was, was going to be able to play this weekend, but now, now it's not looked so hot. hot. No, no, he's out. Uh, might, might be another, another decent week for Mike Davis. How do you guys feel about him this week? week? How I always feel usually. RB2, RB2 right? Mish. Yeah, I'd say he's RB2 with the amount of volume. The Minnesota defense has been a little better lately. I mean, I know the Cowboys beat him, but even Zeke didn't have that great of a day against them. Well, that's because Zeke doesn't have okay, his targets to anybody so anymore. Yeah, yeah he's, he's coming, coming off of... Uh, about a uh, 14.9 fantasy point game. And Ike, you remember that bet we had? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I actually don't remember. I, d- I don't remember. <laughs> Why don't you remind us and the listeners? It was Mike Davis versus Jonathan Taylor. I took Mike Davis, Ike took Jonathan Taylor. Barely ended up winning that game. Barely. 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 So there's, there's a podcast, podcast win, win, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we already kind of went through DJ Moore. Ike's kind of freaking out, man, over there. 
Bubba Bubba Flat, how do you feel about Robbie Anderson? Anderson? I like him still. He's still the underneath slant dude. I mean, he's going to get his targets. It's just a matter of him taking one to the house. Yeah, unfortunately, he hasn't scored a touchdown since week one. Week one. That's, <laughs> the, that's the psyche part. No, you're not wrong. But, I mean, these are his last four games. Uh, eight targets, 13 targets, six targets, nine targets. I mean, he leads his team in targets with 96. That's eight and a half a game. I mean, he's mm-hmm. the clear number one option in this offense at least it's any number one option, option I, I, how do you feel with McCaffrey out with McCaffrey <laughs> out he's better than the number one option he's, he's not better, better than DJ Moore, I, f- I feel like this podcast I, like I feel like this podcast still is just trying to down Ike all, all on DJ Moore <laughs> <laughs> don't feel so like down Ike I like, I like throwing some digs you, you can tell DJ Moore is incredibly better, better than Robbie Anderson. Anderson hey at least he's staying healthier than you know Kenny Galladay maybe yeah. Yes, yes, he is. is. Or Odell Beckham, Beckham, you know. All right, that's enough shit show. We should move. <laughs> How do you guys feel about Curtis Samuel, though? He's getting a lot more involved in this offense. He had 10 targets last week. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I like, like him. him. Yeah, yeah. Wide receiver three, flex. Yeah, you, you plug, plug him in there, you're pretty comfortable at this point. point. You, you think so, like, or no? Yeah. yeah. He's doing, doing what I wanted him to do last year. <laughs> Matt Rule, sure. Matt Rule got the memo for Mike. <laughs> yeah. Use Curtis Samuel this way, and look what happens. He becomes fantasy relevant. <laughs> nah, Ian Thomas doesn't really do anything. <laughs> Jumping over he to might the be. Vikings. I mean, who's more? Real quick, who's more least relevant? Ian Thomas or Ryan Izzo for the Patriots? But <laughs> <laughs> come on, <laughs> they're so <Both>. bad. <laughs> Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Uh, Kirk Cousins, uh, 22 to 30, 30 for 314 to 3 touchdown, touchdown guys, against uh, Crampy Dallas last week. How do you, uh, another, another solid matchup against Carolina. Carolina. How do you feel about him this week? week? I feel this is the Dalvin Cook week. That's how I feel. Okay. Thielen probably out. Thielen is out. They did roll him out, right, because, because of the COVID stuff. stuff. No, no, he still, still has one more chance, chance to be able, able to play the game, but it's looking like he's not going to low. Yeah, yeah, Vikings, Vikings don't, don't expect the Dylan to play. Yeah, he's un- game unlikely. Yeah, he gets a little more tests, though, I'm pretty sure. Justin, Justin Jefferson, Jefferson, though, guys, with the Dylan being out, does that catapult him to wide receiver two, borderline wide, wide receiver one range, range or no? I'd say more wide receiver two, wide receiver three. I'd be scared to start him, man. This will be his first game as the number one option. They're going to be keen in on him. At least in the past. I game, mean, it, so. I personally think they're going to be king on it, Dalvin Cook. Mm. I don't think they want Dalvin Cook to beat him. Dalvin Cook's been on a tear lately. But, uh, I, like you say, if, but, but if, if you have, if you're, you're a Justin Jefferson, Jefferson owner, owner you're, you're putting, putting him in, in your lineup, lineup though. Fuck yeah. 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 Look at the for, way they. For sure. Look at the way they used on Adam Thielen when he was the number one option. I mean, so he's going to get the red zone threats if they get it too. Yeah. No, no I, I think, think the red zone threats are going to go Kyle Rudolph, Dalvin Cook, yeah, or Irv Smith. Yeah. 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 Just Justin Jefferson will have to break a big play for him. You might see some targets sprinkled to BC Johnson here and there, too. Maybe. He's just a fucking guy. Yeah. Anything else? Just a guy. No. Just move on. I just think the only one you can really start from this is probably Justin Jefferson and Irv Smith. Agreed. Uh, 64ers on the Cardinals at the 4-6. Patriots, Kyler Murray. This is an okay matchup. Patriots defense isn't as good as it's uh, been years past. So he's definitely the quarterback one this week still. Set it and forget it, right? Every yep. week. Uh, how do you feel about the backfield? That's a little more a tricky situation there. Chase Edmonds or Kenny Drake, both of you guys. Kenny Drake. Yeah, they seem to, now that Kenny Drake's healthy, they seem to be using him back in that regular role. Chase Edmonds has been used more as the pass catching back. He's been thrown in the slot a couple times. Yep, yep. yep. I, just I just wish Kenny, Kenny Drake, Drake would do more with you after the 11 attempts for 29 yards last week. It's just, just a good, good thing he fell at the end. With how bad he's been, he's still a top eight rusher in the league. Just yeah, in rushing, rushing yards. yards. How weird is that? Andy's RB20 on season two. Yeah, that's how bad running backs have been this year. Yeah, it really is. It really is, but it's crazy. 
Yeah, yeah obviously, obviously, yeah. yeah. Go, Go ahead, ahead Blake. Yeah, ahead. no, the only thing I was going to say is yeah, I, I like Chase Edmonds. If in a PPR league, he kind of reminds me of the Tariq Cohen of this offense. He's fourth on the team in targets. But, yeah, Kenyon Drake, if they get in the red zone, he's going to be the guy in the handoff. So, I mean, I think they each have their own value because this offense is kind of explosive this year. Yep. yep. And, and then, then obviously, yeah, yeah Dre Hopkins. Start him. But, but I want to talk, talk to you guys. guys. Oh, oh, never mind. mind. I'm, I'm just, just looking, looking at it. I didn't even see if Fitz, 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 Fitz got, got put on the reserve COVID, COVID list, too. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so how we feel about Christian Kirk, Kirk then? I like him. Uh, Stephon Gilmore is uh, probably going to be all over DeAndre Hopkins, and I don't even think he's going to be able to stop Hopkins. Here's, Here's a question, question for you guys. I don't know. You guys, guys might not know this. If Larry, with Larry Fitzgerald out and he was playing a lot of the slot too, does that push Andy Isabella to Christian Kirk's outside spot and put, push Kirk back into the slot then, you think? I'm thinking because if that's, that's the case, case I think Kirk's going to see a lot more targets if that's the case. Yeah, that's why I said I like him. I think he'll slide into the slot position, and they're going to have to throw Andy Isabella out there. He might get some deep targets with Kyler. You know how he is. Yeah. But la- when, when Isabella's on the field, you're right. They do like to use him in the deep targets and a little bit in the red zone. Yeah, I mean, last week Larry had 10 targets in the slot. I mean, if Christian moves over to that, you're going to get a healthy target share. Definitely. And then tight, tight end, end pretty relevant, relevant for the Cardinals, too. Dan Arnold catches a touchdown here or there, but you can't guess on that. No. Uh, uh, jumping into the Patriots, Cam Newton. I kind of feel, feel about, about him in this matchup. He's looking a little better. I would not feel safe starting him. Still. Yeah, yeah. His, his, his last, last four games, 19 fantasy points, 24 fantasy points, 16 fantasy points, 19 fantasy points. So he, he hasn't been killing you if you've been playing him. No, he's not going to win you any weeks, but he's not going to lose you any weeks. He has a probably... I mean, him and Kyler Murray have the highest rushing floor for a quarterback this year. Cam Newton's tied for second in the league with rushing touchdowns, only behind Dalvin mm. Cook. And he's, yeah, and he's, crazy. he's tied with Josh Jacobs. That's just stupid for a quarterback to have. But when you have that rushing floor, I mean, he's not going to lose games. How, How many, many touchdowns, touchdowns do you think Cam has thrown through the air, guys? Five. I think it's only like, like four. Or the plant. You're yeah, correct. It is four. Because he only had two on the. He was two and nine, and then I thought he threw two last week. <sighs> four <sighs> passing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns. Yeah, you know, crazy, it's, yeah, it's a weird, weird quarterback year. And then we want to talk about the running back. Sony Michelle might be coming back, so now it's a four-headed monster. Does it? Does Damian Harris go back to? Being irrelevant now, or is Rex Burkhead is out. So yeah, Rex. Right. So it's now three headed. Rex Burkhead's okay. done for the year, so it's only going to be the three. I, I can't see it being possible, but they might try Sony Michelle in the Rex Burkhead role because why would they move Damian Harris's role around? He's been doing so well the way he's. His see role. that where you're wrong. I think it's now James White is back. He's going to be a decent PPR option now in the flex. To be honest, he's going to get his targets. Hey. He's, He's back, back to what he was, probably. I mean, yeah, um, you're not wrong. Chance you're putting Sony Michelle, who literally can't even juke me, out no. into receiving. But I remember, Sorry, Michelle, I remember you saying though he was able to. He was a pass catcher. He was at Georgia, so they for might use reason, it. No, he lost every single shred of ability he had at Georgia. He lost all elusiveness. Bill yeah, Belichick just zero. completely demoralized man. Like, like legit, he like, like me and Dylan, Dylan can run up to him and tackle him because he can't juke me out probably. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad we gave uh, very, very good insight, guys, on that back then. We all said <laughs> we all said <laughs> different guys. <laughs> I mean, I mean, PPR James White, Damian Harris is the red zone. Yes, right, PPR James White, Damian Harris. I say they're both running back twos. I, I've, I've never, never liked Damian Harris, Harris, but he keeps shutting me up. up so. They're both running back twos, probably low value running back twos. And then uh, the pass catchers in this offense, Jacoby Myers, Nikhil Harry, Harry, Jameer Bird. Bird. Jacoby, 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 Jacoby Myers kind of disappointed last week, only five fantasy points. points. But, but three, three weeks before that, had 10 fantasy points, 42, and 13. He's, He's probably, probably going to get Patrick, Patrick Peterson, Peterson, so that's, uh, that, that's, that's not, not good. good. No, it's not ideal. It's going to be a very, very run-oriented run game in James White, like I said. He's going to be big. big. <laughs> but, but uh, uh jump the next game, game the six to four Miami Dolphins, Dolphins versus the 0-10 New York Jets. 
Uh, two guys after being benched last week for Fitzpatrick, he real struggled. And uh, now he's questionable with a thumb injury. You can't start him, right, even in this good matchup? Nah. I wouldn't even. If it, even if he was fully healthy, I wouldn't be starting him. Nah. Still a rookie, man. He doesn't throw enough yet. Yeah, he's he's more of a game manager in this offense. They're not letting him rip out like J- Justin Herbert. Yeah, or yeah, or Burrow was. Yeah, this offense as a whole is kind of kind of struggling. Uh, Savan Ahmad Ahmed, or however you say it, Ahmed. He, he's out too. Uh, is it the Matt Breida show finally? If he can stay healthy. <laughs> if he can stay out well, there the whole game, yeah, it's the Matt Breida show. They don't have Jordan Howard anymore. I don't. I'm not really sure what's uh, what they're gonna do. They got Patrick Laird. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll finally see a little bit of him. <coughs> but uh, I don't think you can start anybody in the backfield. No. Can, 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 can you, you start, start anyone in the offense? Should I just ask that? that? I like Devontae, Devontae Parker. Parker. Yeah. Devontae Parker. I like Devontae Parker. Yeah. I like, I like him a lot better. Fifth place. Yes, me too. <laughs> and Gesicki, in all honesty. I still like him yeah. with Tua, though. I mean, what, since Tua started, I mean, the first week he was involved, he only had two targets. But those three weeks afterwards, he's had seven, seven, and nine. So he's clearly the number one target for Tua when he's in trouble. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. I, I just, just don't like Tua. Tua's thumb fucked up. I don't like that at all. Can, Can we, we make this next uh, next one very quick? Because I don't want anyone from the Jets, and I don't think anyone should be starting anyone from there. Well, I'm James Jim Crowder. We'll plant you out on Perriman now since it's back to Sam Darnold. Was it officially back to Sam Darnold? I believe so. Then yes. Yeah. Then, yes. Then, yes. then yes, I'm out on Brashard Perryman, and I'm bye in bye on Jamison Crowder. <laughs> yeah, if, if Crowder's playing, I'm not... I'll look that up real quick, but yeah, everyone should be on uh, Crowder. LaPlay, go ahead and take Good a chance game. Byron Jones might be on him or Xavier Howard, so. I think it'd be Unlikely like, it's Xavier. Unlikely that's Xavier. It's who, I mean, Jameson Crowder does like to run in the slot a lot, so I mean, I think the Xavier Howard. Byron Jones, Jones can do the slot. Can he? I don't think I, he will that much. Yeah, I but mean. But he can, yeah. With LaMichael Pira, I know, going to IR, Frank Gore's. Got the starting position. I mean, it's gross, sick, puke. It's it's gross. But with two bye weeks next week, maybe some injuries, he might be startable just because of his volume. With well, so, so many running backs, backs out there, not uh, this week, not this why week, because are there's you no go- bye. Week. I know. I'm just saying, like in football in general, with so many running backs on like free agents, you're still rolling out 38 year old Frank Gore. Like, you know what? He can win me games. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think someone needs to have an intervention with Adam Gase. Just insane, so man. There's probably a dude in free agency who's probably ten times better now, obviously, because Frank Gore is old and stuff. But with, it's whatever. But with no bye weeks this week, obviously f- you have better options out there unless you're just barraged with injuries again. But if you have to play somebody, it would be Frank Gore or Crowder would be my choice. Okay, move on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Go uh, ahead, LeBlanc. Take us through. All right. We got the 7-3 Cleveland Browns at the 1-9 Jacksonville Jaguars. And they might have a good weather game being in Jacksonville. They will. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's like, I actually just looked it up, and it's looking good. Thank God, because I saw a stat earlier today that Dak Prescott still has more passing yards than Baker Mayfield on the air. does surprise <laughs> me, actually, one bit. That's that's still my <laughs> Baker's last three fantasy <laughs> points output seven five and eight <laughs> this might be a game where they might let him get a little little frisky just because it's been such shit weather and he hasn't been able to find a rhythm and i know they want to have that's a, what i'm thinking i know they want to the have hell a is he gonna get frisky with <laughs> <laughs> kareem hunt, kareem hunt <laughs> dump off jarvis landry slant maybe a austin hooper uh curl route uh, this Jacksonville defense is banged up, though. So I mean, yeah, I know. You're, you. I think you're. I'd be starting Jarvis Landry, Kareem Hunt, Chubb, and Hooper. Out of ten weeks, out of ten games, sorry guys. How many times do you think Baker's thrown for over two hundred yards this year? Out of ten. Games, two. I'd go. Well, I'd fuck it. I'll go one. Three. Oh wow. <laughs> Damn. 
They're only three, though, guys. It's crazy. Yeah, they, they don't want to throw the ball with them. They seem that... No. I mean, they're 7-3, and three, and he hasn't been throwing the ball. Put him in a bear uniform, he looks way better, I bet. Yep, Nick Chubb, running back one. Kareem Hunt, yep. running back two. Yep. Travis Landry, wide receiver three. Flex. Yep. Uh, Rashard Higgins. Higgins and Hodge, eh. Higgins could be a sneaky flex. He just might catch week. a big touchdown. Yeah, just this week in yeah. the matchup. Yeah. How you guys feel about Jacksonville's offense with us, Mike Skinny Neck Gladden, uh, starting on plan? <laughs> I like James Robinson and James Robinson alone. Fair enough, yeah. It's, and I don't even think he'll uh, be that great well, because I don't well, know how did well. Did you hear what Gladden said? Nope. He said he's, he's back in a big way. No, he said that he's uh, he doesn't know when he's ever going to start again, so he's just fucking sending it. He said he's just going to chuck it all over the yard. Okay. I think we got a uh, <laughs> no, new. DJ Shark, though. I think we so got maybe, uh, we got the beard. Keely Cole, the beardless Ryan Fitzpatrick. What a week for DJ Shark to be out, huh? Yeah. Ty Eifert might actually be okay. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't like anybody but James Robinson with Glennon. All right, jump to the next game. I got to win. <laughs> Eight and two, New Orleans Saints at the four and six Denver Broncos. Uh, Michael the Plant's favorite person, Taysom Hill, tight end Taysom Hill and ESPN Lane. Not anymore. No longer. QB only eligibility. Mm, I wonder why they did that. And that's because he's a QB. It had to be because the Plant was arguing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they listen to an me. angry email. Hey, I just want to let people know I did win last week, so uh, you good people don't lose all the time. Yeah, are are you guys starting him at uh I like QB him. one or no? I, I think he's a high end QB two, low end QB one. He he's he's like Cam Newton. He, I mean he had two rushing touchdowns last week. He had fifty rushing yards. I mean that's value right there. A Cam Newton now a Cam Newton now, right? Not an MVP Cam Newton. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he didn't turn the ball over. He had two hundred plus yards. I mean he should have turned the ball over. He fumbled, but he was able to pick it up. Or no, he did fumble. I meant uh, interception, but yeah. No, you're right. I mean, I th- I think he's worth the start. I mean, Denver Broncos defense ain't that great. I have fun with it. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to start him. Are you uh, worried about Evan Kamara, though, now that Taysom Hill no. started? I mean, Not even remotely. Last week was his first game ever without a reception in his career if you if you if anybody out there thinks if anybody out there thinks Alvin Kamara is not going to get another reception that this week you don't know fantasy football at all I mean not saying that but mobile quarterbacks are kind of known to not dink and dump to their quarter or to their running backs and much. take away from the touchdowns from their running backs like, like Josh Allen is doing for Alvin Kamara yeah. still scored last week still and if he is your star player. I don't think you should be getting away from him. He actually wins you games in the passing game, so if you stop doing that, it's probably not the best idea. You're not wrong, but, I mean, they got Michael Thomas back. He came back last week. He looked good. He had over 100 receiving yards, and it looked like oh, Taysom. Of course it he looked, looks good. It just looked like Taysom Hill was locked on him at all times, and he didn't really look to Alvin Kamara in most of the situations. Well, yeah, that's because he doesn't know how to make reads <laughs> yet. Once again, what's a read? <laughs> I mean, you're, you're still starting out with Kamara. I was just, I mean, it's an only one game sample size, too. I was just a little worried just because he, he, he only had he just one wanted target. To bust your ball. He just wanted to bust your balls. Like. Yeah, he only had one target. I mean, it was just weird. But, I, 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 I'm, I'm just baffled. You guys are worried, worried after one game. game. I'm just worried about his PPR value because that's where most of his value came from. He was able I'd to be, be more, more worried, worried than standard. Because in standard, in standard he, doesn't he doesn't rush the ball. The ball. Yeah, I was never really popular on Alvin Kamara in standard leagues in general. <laughs> but uh, who, who, who plays, plays standard, standard leagues? Exactly, who plays those? But about, uh, do you guys like Latavius Murray though? He had 12 rushing attempts last week. I mean, it's clear they want to yeah. use him. Is he? If you're, you're bit by the injury bug, go ahead, plug him in, and he'll get you six to 12 fantasy points. Mm-hmm. I th- but uh, I, there's many more options that I would uh, well not many more but there's more options that I would like I agree I, th- I think he's a poor man's Kareem Hunt 
But uh, like, sure. like I said with Mike Thomas, now that he's back, you're starting him. He looked good. Taysom obviously likes him as his number one option. Manuel Sanders, though. Uh, you guys no. you guys don't like him at all now that uh, Taysom Hill is the guy? Mike, Mike Thomas never, never liked him. Only in the pass catching department. Yeah, I mean, if you're... If you're really desperate, you can go. I mean, he had five targets last week, but that was the second highest behind Michael Thomas's twelve. But yeah, that's that's all I have to say about them. Uh, do you like Jared Cook though? Eh? No. Yeah. Okay, that's no. Why you gotta be playing him, probably. Though. I mean, I I don't know if he's gonna be what he was with Drew Brees because Drew Brees like to look at for him in the red zone. I don't know if Taysom Hill is the same kind of guy, but yeah, like you said, with tight ends being shit, I mean, they, the tight end is involved in this offense. Hey guys, he, uh, week nine, three fantasy points. Week ten, no fantasy points. Last week, one fantasy point. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's a must start anymore. Denver's tough against tight ends, too, so I, yeah. If you look towards the waiver wire, go ahead and uh, read my way, uh, tight end streaming article on the website, guys, and then I'll uh, help you out there. Yep, that being said, we'll move on to the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> With uh, Drew Locke, don't start him, guys. Uh, this is a decent New Orleans offense. Dude, Saints defense is starting to feel, man. Yeah, they're starting to cook up a little bit. They're getting pressure. They're getting turnovers. Drew Locke ain't any good until the fourth quarter. I, I'd sit him. Yeah, and he's a, tur- yeah, he's a turnover machine. But uh, would you guys start Melvin Gordon this week? I mean, I know the Saints, they don't Hell allow... No. This, they don't allow well, 100 no. yards rushers. Hell no. But Melvin Gordon had two. Hell t- to no. He had two touchdowns last week, and that's value. Yeah, I don't care. Nah, dude. Not against the Saints. Yeah, no. It's tough, man. Tough to run the ball there. Yeah, it's... Well, I know no running back. I don't want either of them. It's not a good I don't want any of this offense, offense man. Uh, uh, not even, no, Jer- man. Not even your boy Jerry Judy? No. 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 I mean, they're going to be down, so they're going to be throwing it. So, I mean, maybe Tim Patrick, you guys like him? Not really. Man, you guys Not are just Debbie no Downers. Just no fat, really. How, how can you trust Tim Patrick, Patrick in your lineup? Be like, how can you honestly be like, yes, man. Tim Patrick is my guy this week that's going to give me a win against yeah, that off against that defense. I would 100% rather have no fan than Jared Cook, though, I'll tell you that. Yes, sir. Yeah, no offense, the second most targeted guy in this offense. I mean, as long as he's healthy, he's getting the volume. Yep. Uh, we'll move on to the next game then. We have the four and six San Francisco 49ers at the seven and three LA Rams. Sit Nick Mullins. I, I don't know if anybody's even starting him, but sit him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Raheem Mostert. Uh, did he get activated off the IR? He is going to be activated off of IR. He will be playing. All right. If he is, uh, I mean, obviously pay attention to him because I just looked it up. He's still on the IR, IR as of now. So just pay attention. But if he is off the IR, you're obviously, I mean, you're starting him. He's been pretty good in this offense. Yeah, he's definitely has uh, some flex appeal this week. Not, not the greatest team to be starting no, against not, coming off injury. Not the greatest matchup, but he has shown that he has value in this offense. Uh, people I'd probably, probably wait a week. Uh, but if Mo- if Mostert is starting, you're probably going to sit McKinnon. I don't see him getting much attention or Coleman in this game. Uh, I heard news of Debo Samuel. He's going to be playing this week. Uh, yeah. If, if he gets the Jalen Ramsey treatment, are you guys benching him? Yep. I'm well, already playing him this week anyways. anyways. We talked about it last week. Ramsey just normally plays a side, so it's going to be tough to say. I mean, there are other corners playing just as good, not just as good, but playing pretty well, too. So, I mean, this is going to be a tough one for the 49ers. Yeah, I just. Especially with IU on COVID or whatever, what's going on with him. Yeah, I mean, he's still got to pass a couple tests, so he might be able to play in this game, but if he don't pass those tests, he's not playing. Yeah, this is going to be a rough one, man. Yeah, I think the Rams' defense will probably feast in this one. I mean, Niners have been struggling as of late. I don't know. Raheem Mostert might throw a little bit of flair into this offense with, you know, someone focusing on something. Maybe they'll change, change the game plan. plan That's what I'm saying. Because you know how yeah. Kyle Shanahan is. He's weird with his game plans. Yeah, you gotta know. Uh, 
Jordan Reed, though, I mean, with he's kind of been making some sort of noise. I mean, he had that cool one-handed catch the week before. I mean, do you guys like him as a tight end in this shit show of a position? Straight yeah. up, we absolutely need him, I guess. Uh, there's, again, with no bye weeks, you can, there's got to be at least a tight end somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. But you I know, only play one tight end for the most part. Yeah, no, that's true. With uh, Logan Thomas and uh, Kendrick Bourne, and I mean Kendrick Bourne. Uh, what the hell? Who the TJ Hawkinson played already. Some people might not have the options. You know, so that's, that's true. true. Yeah. Uh, but we'll move on to the next team then, the LA Rams, with this nice matchup. Are we streaming Jared Goff this week? Yeah. I, I guess. guess. Uh, uh, is it a nice matchup, matchup though? I mean, I mean, I'm still okay. I don't, I'm, I'm assuming this isn't going to be a very high-scoring game. Yeah, I agree. He's, He's a quarterback, quarterback too, so I guess I'll go push back a little bit on what I just said. Yeah, boy. I'd, like, I'd rather have Derek Carr. Who we are yes, now. I agree. I don't think this is going to be very high-scoring. I think it's going to be very... Slow running, Divisional, short passes. He'll probably throw a touchdown or two, obviously, but I don't think it's gonna be for many yards. All right, and uh, out of this, you know, shit show of backfield huh, with Daryl, Daryl Henderson. Did he go down with injury, or is everybody healthy? I, I really don't know. It's a shit show. <sighs> no, nope. right Henderson's healthy. Acres. Well, Lakers isn't doing anything. Henderson's the guy, obviously, but you're not kind of uh, nope. super happy about it. Yeah, no, I mean, there's, they just, this is a top five rushing team. It's just a matter of choosing the right player. I mean, last week it is not even that. that. It's just they're using all three of them, so they're all gaining forty yards, thirty yards, thirty yards. So that's why the rushing is so good. I, none, none, none of them are busting out, really. No, none of them are. I mean, it's in my mind, it's between Daryl Henderson and Malcolm Brown just because those are the only two running backs with touchdowns on the year. Cam Akers though, doesn't even have a touchdown. Sure, yeah. I mean, no, Cam, Cam Akers, Akers is completely irrelevant. irrelevant. Yeah. Uh, He's getting, getting a Daryl Henderson, Henderson treatment, treatment from Sean Mc... Mc that um, Sean McVay sure. did to him last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean... If you have to choose out of those two, Daryl Henderson's the number one guy, but if he's down, Malcolm Brown's the next guy in line. Yep. yep. You're starting Cooper Cup, starting Robert Woods. After monster help. weeks last week. Yeah, Josh, Josh Reynolds, you're probably not starting him this week with no bye weeks. But he's someone who should probably be owned. He, he had been seeing a bulk of targets yeah. before last week. His last three uh, games, he had 25 targets. I mean, he... he if you want to go to four games, he had uh, 33 targets. I mean, he's definitely yeah. been involved. He still saw six targets last week, so yeah, I, I think, think he's definitely rosterable now. Yeah. yeah good, good wide receiver depth on your bench. He's going to see more value as long as, you know, the other team doesn't allow Cooper Cup and Robert Woods to get 10-plus receptions each game. Mm-hmm. That's what kind of hampered his value. Otherwise, that he's been on steady pace for a, a flex territory. And then uh, Tyler Higby is uh, questionable. McVeigh said he is a game time decision. So I kind of like Gerald Everett if Higby doesn't play, guys. Yes, if you don't play. I like Everett way more than Higby ever. Yes, yes, agreed. <laughs> but yeah, probably rest of the season then for all three of us, we would go Gerald Everett over Tyler Higby. Injury yeah, or they, not. If Higby doesn't play, Everett's probably the, would be the number one streaming tight end this week. Yes, sir. They involve this tight end in their offense a lot. Mm-hmm. So we'll uh, move on to probably the, one of the better games of the week. We got the nine and one Kansas City Chiefs at the seven and four Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I know this is going to be a tough matchup for Mahomes, but you're starting him. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the box have kind of been eaten alive a little bit the last couple weeks, right? It doesn't even matter. It's Patrick Mahomes, you're starting him. Yeah, he's QB1 <laughs> on the year. You're starting him. It doesn't matter. He's going to... I mean, back when the Ravens were the number one defense, he torched them. Yeah, you shouldn't even have to be thinking about that. But uh, because of the tough run defense of the Buccaneers, do we want to temper our expectations on CEH a little bit? Yeah, Clyde. Big time. Yeah, push him down to flex. 
Yeah. And uh, that would probably... He's trying to figure out the red zone ordeal, but... I know... So, you hope for a touchdown, but man. And I know uh, Le'Veon Bell was tough. involved a little bit last week, but with the tough matchup, I see him totally being non-existent this week. Yeah, he's, he's basically been non-existent. I mean, he snuck into the end zone last week. He might, you know, flex to somebody, but that's not in this matchup at all. But So, Tyreek Hill... You're probably yeah. going to start him because Patrick Mahomes is yeah, the god. Yes, and starting him. <laughs> Sammy Watkins, though, he is, I seen that he is most likely going to play this week. Do we like him in this matchup? Not, Not so much. much. You don't trust him. You never trust really? him, but he's, he pops out of the scene with a two-touchdown game. He's either going to have Murphy Bunting or Davis on him. If it's Murphy Bunting, it's, it's a wrap for Watkins. Yeah, if he gets Carlton Davis, I think that he won't. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't know if Tampa Bay's corners are good, but I don't know if they have the speed to keep up with Hill or Watkins. Murphy Bunting is very good. Murphy I will. Think he'll do very good. He's got the speed, so whoever Murphy's going to be on is the one that's going to probably have a down week. But I don't know if Carlton Davis has the speed to keep up with a Tyree Kill. I don't think he does. Yeah, so, I mean. He's taller. I know that. But with that being said, I mean. Demarcus Robinson, Miko Hardman. I mean, I'm. You're not confident in either of these guys unless there's an injury ahead of them. I mean, Miko Hardman might not be bad. He's he's all, especially uh, with the slot. <laughs> he, he's your Deshaun Jackson because of this offense. Hey, the offense I, I have him in Abig 100, and I'm with Ian Thielen. I need hope for something, right, guys? <laughs> but um, nobody cares. But that's fine. Since, I mean, if you're looking to put somebody who's got three double-digit fantasy points uh, games all season in your lineup, then <laughs> go ahead and do it. <laughs> but uh, one guy who's some had... people have no choice, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but but one guy who's had double-digit points every week but one, and that was their bye week. Uh, Travis Kelsey, automatic start. I mean, this guy's pretty much a wide receiver too. <laughs> Uh, so we'll move on because I know you guys don't have any questions about that to the Buccaneers. Tom Brady, he's been struggling. Uh, you guys like him in this matchup? I mean, Chiefs aren't the easiest defense to throw on. I don't know, man. I it really don't know. Depends, it all depends on if Brady's under pressure. If Kansas City can put some pressure on him, then Brady's going to struggle. Which they might not be able to. Right, and then Brady might just pick them apart. Yeah, you know. I mean, his Achilles heel he's, at this point in his career is definitely... It's going to be a shootout, I think. I really yeah. do think it's going to be a shootout. I don't see Brady as a low-eyed quarterback one. Like, an eight-ish, probably. Yeah. yeah. This one might be a fun fantasy game, like I said. Might be a shootout. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why I'm starting Antonio Brown, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, who would you start out of this matchup, then? Ronald Jones or Leonard Fournette, if it's going to be a shootout? I mean, you got, I, you got four nuts value with the PPR. He seems to be involved in the passing game, but Ronald Jones seems to be the guy that Arians wants to run. I'd probably pick Rojo. Yeah, I lean towards the more talented player, and I'm start, and I think Rojo is better than Fournette. If you asked me this three years, four years ago, I would have said Fournette by a mile. Yeah. Yeah, but, unfortunately, man, he's falling from grace. Unfortunately, it's not our opinion of who's the better talent. It is Bruce Arians, and we honestly don't even know who that is in his opinion. It's Ronald Jones, Jones, man, he, he knows that. that. He, know that. <laughs> he knows that until uh, Ronald Jones fumbles, and then it's Leonard Fournette's game. Yeah, just hang on the ball, man. But it's not uh, that hard. You're starting Mike Evans though in this matchup. Uh, yeah, he's, he's coming back. back. Yeah, uh, Chris Godwin, you're starting him. He seems yep. to get. Each of them got a touchdown last week. Uh, and like you said, Ike, I mean, unfortunately, I have to agree with you. You're starting Antonio Brown. He's due for a big play. He hasn't had one in this box. It keeps slipping out of his hands. You yeah, can tell he's lost his speed. It's coming. It's yeah. Coming. He's still talented. He's got the opportunity. And that he's always 32 years, two years old, which, I mean, since he's been gone for so long, you forget that he's that old. It's like, what the yeah. fuck? But, uh, I mean... I don't know what in uh, Dylan's right mind to forget about Rob Gronkowski here and only list Cameron Brait, but uh, we're starting. That's what I'm talking about. We're starting Rob Gronkowski because he <laughs> he started as a solid tight end uh, coming off these past couple weeks. Don't, don't diss Cameron, Cameron Brait like that. I'm man. not dissing Cameron Brait. Right. It's just Rob Gronkowski. That's his boy. Tom Brady's out there, man. It's the Brait man. <laughs> so we'll move on to the Sunday night game. This one will be a thriller. 
they can uh, why can't they flex this game and put this as an afternoon game and put the Chiefs because the Mitch Trubisky is about to absolutely annihilate the Green Bay Packers this week. It would be a sweet comeback. Story. He's going to give them the business. Does that mean if that if he beats the Packers, it's all forgiven in Chicago? Uh, I agree. No, I'm asking. Well, I'm asking. I think so. But yeah, to be honest, he should have been starting the whole time. For uh, because we haven't even said the game I for everyone who doesn't know. This for is the past year that Nick Foles is washed. Beyond belief, the dude's shoulders jacked, his, he can't move. And they're like, no, he's fine, he'll be great, he'll lead us to the playoffs. Not even close. Well, I mean, would you start Mitch Trubisky this week? No. <laughs> I started him before this year. Uh, I definitely started him week one, I know for sure, but hey, not this week. Then you did week, week one, too, though. Hey, they played Detroit, that was a good uh, call. Yeah, I think I did, yeah. But, uh, so we're not going to start Mitch Trubisky then. Uh, no. Why don't you go off, though, man? David he's Mon- back in a big way. David Montgomery, though, it's looking like he's going to clear concussion protocol. He was back at practice. Uh, he hasn't officially been cleared yet, so pay attention to that. But if he is cleared, you're starting him. Uh, the Packers' run defense ain't that great. I mean, look at Jonathan and uh, Taylor. Packers' Packers. run defense is dog shit, but unfortunately the Bears' offensive line is more dog shit. So there's still not going to be any room for him to run. Yeah, you're going to be looking at about a lot of two-yard carries. He sees a lot of work in the passing game with Cohen beat out. So enough, he'll yeah. probably get to see his 12 to 15 PPR fantasy points. And you're okay with that as your running back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but with Mitchell Trubisky starting now, are we worried about Allen Robinson? I mean, he was, do- he was doing pretty well with Nick Foles pl- throwing to him. Now that we got Mitch throwing to him, I mean, the beginning of the year, Robinson kind of struggled. You guys still like him as wide receiver one? He saw nine targets in each game from Mitch that Mitch started and finished. Um, But he's He's wide receiver two, I guess, pretty much for the rest of the year. I agree. Yeah. Low end. Stays about the same, yeah. Yeah, he has. I mean, it's not like he was lighting up the world with Nick Foles. He kind of had a little bit of a down year. Looking at one of my leagues, he's the 17th ranked ranked receiver, and he was going 17th ranked. <laughs> he was going as a top 10 guy. Yes. That damn yeah, Wanker. It was a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah, no, I mean, production wise, he has been a disappointment. Volume wise, I mean, he's still the same. I mean, he is 21% target share. That's 9%. percent That's actually kind of low. That's 9% more than anybody else on the team. He averages 9.6 snaps a, a game. I mean, only 21. I thought it'd be higher, like the 25s. But I don't really like anybody else in this offense with Mitch and nah. Cohn to locking in Allen Robinson and locking in the one guy. So I feel like you can't really trust it. Move, move along, move along. Yeah, so you don't trust Jimmy Graham anymore? No. Have, Have we, we ever? ever? I mean, in the beginning, you did. Yeah, because he's a touchdown making machine. <laughs> no, so move on to Green Bay. Yeah, we're going to sit Jimmy Graham. Uh, so we'll move on to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be a tough matchup, especially. Uh, I mean, I know Aaron Rodgers has been good, but the Packer, uh, Bears defense is really good itself. Yeah, 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 yeah it's, it's gonna, gonna be a tough, tough one for him, but I feel like it'll be fine. Uh, yeah, well, I want to. He'll throw to his boy Devontae fifteen times. I want to three okay. out of his last four starts against the Bears. Rodgers has scored less than fifteen fantasy points, so just keep that in the back of your mind. What was the one time he didn't? Um. The game that he came back with. The oh, yep, yep. When he came so they back and torched the Bears for like three touchdowns. Three, four oh, yeah, that that was that that Khalil yeah. Max, uh, uh, yeah, when he that, well, yeah, didn't he strip or Just showing Kaiser, yeah. Yeah, that was Kaiser's on, on the Bears now. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, is he the backup? Did he. Full circle, circle man. <laughs> backup, backup. Backup to Tyler Bray. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, but with this tough matchup, uh, obviously you're starting Aaron Jones, but you're probably going to temper your expectations. The Bears rush defense even held Derrick Henry in check. It depends, though, the play. Akeem Hicks is banged up. If he doesn't play, then it's a whole different ballgame. Mm-hmm. He's really the big run stopper. You saw it on Monday night or whatever the Bears played or whatever they played. The Vikings. Uh, the Vikings. Dumb because struggled all game, but right as soon as. Hicks went down, Cook uh, went on a 
15, 20 yard run. So. Yeah, so temper your expectations with Aaron Jones. Watch that. Uh, maybe if Akeem Hicks doesn't play, he'll have a better game. But, I, I mean, I still see him as more touchdown dependent. I don't see him getting a lot of yards. He might be involved in the pass game. But with the tough matchup, I'd be sitting Jamal Williams, too. Uh, you're obviously starting Devontae Adams. I know he's going to have Kyle Fuller on him, but he's just... Yeah, shit, shit, it don't matter. He's just the target monster. He, he's the clear number yep. one guy in this offense, and he's going to continue to be that. He's good. Yeah. Uh, MVS though, there was, uh, he was listed as an injury, uh, late this week. I can't remember what it was. I want to say it was hamstring. It's It's enough enough to not have, you're you're not not playing playing him. Achilles, that's what I was stuck in my you're mind. Yeah, not you're not playing him with no. an Achilles. He might even if he was healthy. He might be done for the rest of the year if if the Achilles bothers him. I mean, with that that's being said, Alan Lazard's finally back. Uh, I don't, don't play him. him. Yeah, I don't like this matchup for him. It's pretty, pretty much Bobby, Bobby Tanya, and Adams. Go ahead, Lazard. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd play Alan Lazard in better matchups. I think he's the matchup dependent guy in this offense. I would even trade or trade play Bobby, Bobby Tanya. Tanya. Yeah, I don't. I, I mean, <laughs> he's the matchup guy in my mind too. But if you ha- if you have to, I mean, this is a decent offense. It's been efficient to where they get in the red zone, and he might get a red zone look. So, I mean, yeah, it's not. It's just a guess. <laughs> I've uh, played many others. Keep it rolling. Yep. Keep it rolling. I spent too much time on the Bears. Uh, you're they gonna have did. that being a Bear fan. So mm-hmm. we'll move on to the Monday Night Football game. This one will be another thriller. We got the seven and three Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you got your wish, guys. Seahawks in prime time, versus the three six and one Philly Daffy. It's the only time, time Russell does, does good. I feel like. like. Mm-hmm. So you're starting Russell. I know that. Yeah. yeah. The Eagles defense. Starting Carson, is, obviously. Uh, yeah, Carson, Carson might be back this week. It's he like should be. He's gonna play. He's yeah. been practicing fully. I, but if he, he doesn't, does Carlos side definitely running back. Yep. Yeah. I. I this Eagles run defense is better than people give them credit for. I just, yeah, I don't know if they'll have a lot of yards, but they're definitely with this offense. They're going to be a good chance. It's going to be used in the past exactly. game. Too. Well, that's yeah. I don't know if Carlos Hyde will be. Chris Carson. The back Chris is, Carson. Will. The back yes. is just valuable. And yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, they score. They score. They score. Yeah, th- that's what yeah, makes him relevant is the scoring. But I would temper your expectations mm-hmm. on the yards. He might have a decent sure. GBR game though. But, uh, you start Lockett. Yep. You don't know if yep. he's going to be Boomer Boss, unfortunately. You start DK. Yeah. Are no, you starting David Moore, though? No. No, no, no. no. All right, with that being said. If, it was, if, if, if you knew for sure this would be a shootout, which I don't think it will because the Eagles' if offense is terrible, then I would think about starting David Moore. But, man, I don't know if there would be enough opportunities for him. Yeah, I know. I'm interested to see. Go ahead, the play. No, I, I think you and I were about to say the same thing, possibly. I'm interested to see <laughs> how Seattle's defense does because i just seen that they activated Snacks Harrison off of the practice squad. Carlos Dunlap's mm-hmm. been doing well. They got Bobby Wagner. They got Jamal Adams back. I mean, it might, might be okay. okay. Yeah. It might be a little bit better. better. Yeah, it might be a little bit better. So I would definitely not be starting Carson Wentz. I'm also interested, guys, in the Will Disley, Jacob Hollister, um, with Greg Olson going down. Just I picked Disley. On because Disley and Hollister, they both been at times throughout really the good. They both been relevant. Yeah. It's just a matter of picking which one. I have to say Disley, I think. So just keep your eye on it. I would, I would. Future weeks, you know, for the playoff push. Yes, yeah, this week it's too unpredictable. I would lean, go with Ike, and I'd lean Disley too. But yeah, use this week to figure out which one is going to be the more involved one. <laughs> but like I said, uh, after you ruined my transition into the Carson Wentz Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles, you're you're benching Carson Wentz. I mean, he's he's been volume dependent, but he's just not been good. He's just turning the ball over left and right. Yeah, I, no, I don't want him. Most of you are in 10 team leagues, and he's nowhere near. You got better options with no buys. <laughs> yeah, with no buys, you got better options. Uh, but Miles Sanders, he struggled You're a little starting. bit. Yeah, he struggled a little bit last week. You you hope to see him get back on track against this middle of the pack defense. I mean, Seattle's actually been pretty decent against the running back, but that's just because everyone's been able to throw all over him, so the stats are a little skewed. Sure. Yeah. But you're starting Miles Sanders. I just, I, I'm a little concerned to see how he does with Carson Wentz making terrible decisions. That's my only worry. <laughs> but with that being said, 
Uh, how do you guys feel about you know the pass catchers in this offense? Travis Fulgram, Jalen Rager. I mean, even Alshon Jeffrey. You guys starting oh, like any of them? Dallas Goddard. Uh, thank you for the fourth option. <laughs> uh, probably start Why though? Why? Why? Not because anymore. the Seahawks defense, defense is terrible. But I can't do it anymore. He's been, been a bum. He's been a bum. Why? Why, Why do you have to though? He's had some tough matchups though. I think that's been attributed. One so interception, five targets. targets. One interception, seven targets. Last two games. He had, he's he's a, still he getting targets, targets, though. It could be he can't catch the ball anymore, or it could be because Carson Wentz doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, the gross targets <laughs> is the problem. Yeah, it's, he, he's just... I don't know. This, if you're starting him any time, this would be the week, I guess. Uh, he kind of reminds me of... I mean, not as much volume, but he kind of reminds me of Allen Robinson a little bit with the shit volume. And a terrible offense. And a terrible well. offense, we yes. Anyway. Well, Dallas Goddard, though, I mean, he's showed to be a little Starter, bit better. we already talked about but, it, but are you confident with Zach Ertz coming back? Yeah, it puts Zach Ertz even fully coming back. Yeah. Uh, it, there's talk that he might be activated off of. Yeah, it might be. Pretty soon, but yeah, My no chance, chance of playing full amount of snaps. But, but until then, Goddard's a tight end. Yeah. Yes, but my guess is Zach Ertz will play this this play this game. He's on a contract year, and he's looking to make another contract. So I think he's going to try to get out of the field, and that's going to limit Dallas Goddard's volume a little bit. Yeah, yeah when it happens, I'm sure. And uh, we'll move on to the last game because this was flexed to Tuesday night because of COVID concerns. The six and four Baltimore Ravens versus the ten and zero Pittsburgh Steelers. At least the Ravens. Uh, we can go through quick here. Yep, Lamar, <laughs> Lamar Jackson's got COVID. He tested for it. It's looking like he was ruled out. I believe. Yes, he is. No, this can be super quick. I, you're literally only starting Gus Edwards, maybe in the flex. Yeah. And Mark Andrews is a low end tight end. Uh, or that, yeah. nobody else. Maybe people did. Got. Maybe people live under a rock and they didn't know about these COVID situations and they don't know that J.K. Dobbins also tested positive. Mark Ingram also tested positive. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, unfortunately, guys, you Lamar, you can't use anybody, anybody. in Baltimore yep. really besides nope. those two guys. So it's, uh, it's yeah. gonna be a struggle. It's, it's gonna, gonna be an ugly, ugly game. game. Yeah, with this with this game being it as it is, it's looking like the Steelers have a good chance of going undefeated on the year. This was yeah. probably their most challenging game left on the schedule, and with the COVID issues, uh, they might steamroll them. But uh, yep. then, are we starting Big Ben with confidence? I mean, uh, nope. the offense is banged up. I was gonna yeah. say the offense is banged up, but I don't know if the defense is. Big Ben's been hot lately. Uh, no no chance, chance they're going to be scoring enough points for him to be good for a QB1. Yep, no, I'm just saying, oh, uh, the last four games for Ben, he's had 11 touchdowns, one interception. He's got 1,000 yards in the last four games. That's average of 250 yards a game. I mean, he's been quarterback one material. But this seems like a 20-9 to nine game to me. Yep, this is the classic <laughs> Pittsburgh-Baltimore rivalry game, with it, so it's going to be... With it being 20-9, to nine, do you guys like James Conner in this matchup? Wow. They've been playing ahead most of these games, but why is Conner not getting the workload? Is it because they don't want him to break down? I mean, maybe yeah, because they are staring down the playoffs. Yeah, that's sure what enough. I was just gonna say. They are undefeated. It's looking like they're gonna like, be the first team to clinch a playoff spot. They're not looking to hurt anybody. A lot of these players aren't gonna be playing full snaps for a bit. Nice this game, game might be one of them. Attempts, Thirteen attempts, you know, and three fantasy points, five fantasy points, eleven fantasy points. It's just been disappointing. You might see low numbers for a lot of these guys. Yeah, Why he has you a, he has put a, 20, 20 targets into Deontay Johnson when you're probably going to steamroll the Ravens I mean, and risk injury for playoffs. And you know? Juju's coming into this game banged up. I'm yeah, so I don't know. He, he rolled his ankle lot. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely, definitely not worth risking it when you're 9-0 or whatever you are. 10-0. Yeah. 10-0. Yeah. He no. stepped on a flag, rolled his fucking ankle out. Yeah, yeah that's that crazy. crazy. Yeah, I mean, I would have to temper expectations on, then on James Conner for the rest of the year. I mean, he hasn't gotten 20 carries since week seven. No, man, yeah. And he's probably going to be a solid RB2 two rest of the year. Um, Deontay Johnson, clear number one guy in this offense, even with Juju heating up the past couple weeks. 
I'm your team, team your start. start. Yes, sir. Uh, Juju Smith Schuster. I mean, you guys didn't like him in the beginning of the year, but he's kind of come on. If I now that what Ike said with his ankle, I'm I don't know if I'm as confident starting Juju just because they might rest him. He, he was, was actually, actually in my start. start uh, my, sorry, my sit. Um, part in the start sit article because I just I don't like this matchup for him at all. And with the ankle injury, it's yep. not not ideal. And then. Uh, with this matchup not being ideal, I mean, Chase Claypool's matchup's not going to be that great either. I mean, he does have a t- uh, 10 touchdowns in 10 games played for him, though. I mean, the guy's a touchdown machine. Do you guys see him possibly getting a touchdown this game? If, if he needs need some upside, upside, yeah, I agree with Mike, but if you need some upside in your flex, the big play guy, maybe, sure, yeah. bust, maybe bust a big play, yep. maybe hopefully win you your week. Now. Yeah, he's definitely a guy that could possibly win you your week with that big play. Uh but a guy that probably won't win you your week any week. Uh, but he <laughs> won't he won't lose you your week either. Eric Ebron. Uh, he's okay. He's okay. He, yeah, he's okay. He, he's nothing more to be said. He's, he's okay. He's okay. I mean, he's this okay. offense been efficient, so he's he's worth a start in this shitty tight end atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And uh, that completes all of our game previews. Uh, Dylan, do you want to send us out? Oh, oh sure. sure. Um, guys, as always, please subscribe to the Fast Six Pack YouTube channel and uh, like, subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to it. Uh, follow me on Twitter, please, at dclemens2222. Follow my two articles every week at fastsixpack.net. Talk about your tight ends. Talk about your start sits. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at be like underscore Mike with two eyes. I write the weekly trend articles. Uh, usually come out every Monday. It's either, it's either that or if I'm feeling lazy, they're out on Tuesdays. Go ahead, Ike. Uh, you can follow me at Twitter at Ike2121. I do the injury impact. And I'm pretty sure it comes out on Monday every time. Could be wrong. Sometimes it do that on Tuesdays, though. <laughs> But uh, we, uh, as always, guys, we appreciate you listening, and we'll be here next week to uh, run you through the games. Peace. Not to you. For the playoffs, man. Hell yeah, playoff push. Playoffs. Bye-bye. Peace. Bye-bye.